On page 72 of your workbook is um, premature ventricular complexes, so let's talk about those. Again, if you'll recall, whenever we're looking at ectopic beats, first we want to analyze the underlying rhythm. So if we're looking at the, uh, the underlying rhythm here, um, where am I now? So here we have a QRS that falls in a dark line. The heart rate here is 300, 150, 175, uh, 60. Um, the difference between 75 and 60 is 15 divided by 5 is 3, so that's 63, 66, 69 roughly. So the heart rate is uh, 69 uh, beats per minute roughly, and it's uh, a sinus uh, rhythm underlying, so we have a normal sinus rhythm. And then we have this funny looking beat here, uh, which I'll talk about. So um, heart rate and the underlying uh, rhythm may vary and maybe normal, maybe fast, maybe slow. Uh, where there's a premature ventricular complex, there's no P wave preceding the PVC. So you notice that there's no P wave here. This is actually a T wave here, so we don't see any P wave there. And the peer interval uh, where the PVC is concerned is um, not applicable. And uh, the QRS is wide and bizarre, and that's key. Right? The QRS has to be at least 0.12 second or greater. Um, the QRS of a PVC will be at least 0.12, but is usually 0.14 second or, or greater. And uh, with this wide and bizarre QRS, the beginning of the QRS starts about here, and the end of it is roughly there. So uh, this is probably the T wave here or the ventricular repolarization phase. Uh, but in any case, just by looking at it, we can see this is a wide QRS. There's probably no great need to measure it in, um, in detail. And... Um, the ratio of um, uh, P waves to QRS is, is applicable in the underlying rhythm, but in the PVC it's not applicable. And the rhythm is regular except where disrupted by the PVC or PVCs. The exception would be um, a patient who has an underlying rhythm of atrial fib, which is normally irregularly irregular, and you know if they have PVCs thrown in there, then it would be an underlying um, irregular rhythm. Now, one of the other things I wanted to mention about uh, premature ventricular complexes is um, in this particular case, you can tell clearly that this is a ventricular uh, beat uh, for a number of reasons. One, because it's wide and bizarre. Two, because there are no P waves. But if you think about um, how we monitor patients, normally in lead two, we have a positive electrode here. And in the underlying beats, we can see the QRS is positively deflected. And that's because the wave of depolarization moves towards the positive electrode. So you get a positive QRS. But in the case of the PVC, you know, if we move that over here, um, if you have a focus down here and the wave of depolarization is moving away from this positive electrode, then we get this negatively deflected QRS. So we know um, this focus is... Uh, depolarizing it in the opposite direction of these underlying beats. So that's just additional evidence that we're dealing with a PVC here. The other thing is worth mentioning is that um, you'll sometimes hear people talk about a compensatory pause following a PVC. Now, a compensatory pause means that if you uh, map out the R to R waves, um, then um, the the distance between uh, the beat preceding the PVC and the beat after the PVC is ex uh, equal to exactly two cycles, and they call that a compensatory pause. So most PVCs you'll see a compensatory pause, but I wouldn't hang your hat on the compensatory pause because not all PVCs have a compensatory pause, and sometimes you'll see PACs with a compensatory pause.